Welcome back to the Dashboard Effect Podcast. I'm Rick Thompson. And I'm Caleb Oaks. Hey, Caleb. Hey. So last episode we talked about, actually last two episodes we talked about uh, data. Uh, first, just sort of the concept of databases and what are they and, and what are the different pieces of them. Uh, and then we talked about getting access to data that's in a database that's in an application, like a CRM or an ERP. Mm -hmm. um, one thing that comes up with our clients sometimes is that they feel like the, the data in their systems, say their ERP, is bad data. Mm -hmm. And so why would you even want access to bad data? Um, why would you want to pull it out? Why not just wait until you fix all the data in that system over the next whatever years <laughs> yeah, right. and then start pulling it out and doing reporting on it? Yeah. So that's what I wanted to talk about today. Yeah. I mean, it's the age old garbage in, garbage out thing, right? right? Which has a lot of merit to it. Um, and, you know, I think I think some of the things we're going to get into today are are going to explain why you would still want to pull that data out regardless. I think everybody has bad data. And this thing is, is that bad data is kind of a subjective term, right? right. There's not a universally agreed upon definition of that. That's right. So, um, and it can be different degrees of bad too. Yeah, exactly. Right. right. Exactly. So, you know, what, well, and one thing, you know, someone might think that one thing's bad data and another person's like, well, that's how it's supposed to be. Like, what are you talking about? Yeah. Right. So, yeah, yeah, exactly. so, so it's important to, to think about that too. When we talk about bad data, um, it goes, goes through somebody's own, own filter. So the first thing you got to decide is what's good data. Yeah. Yeah. And what, what do we mean by bad? I remember an experience early in my career where we had an ERP system that was storing sales transactions and it would store the the items that you were selling and the, the price that you sold them for, and then a cost. So you could try to figure out the, the item profit on each sale. The problem was that the cost that it was looking up was an average cost of an inventory system, and it was just always wrong uh, mm -hmm. for, for whatever reasons. It was probably process issues and issues with how the system was being used. And so some people considered the data that came out uh, or the reporting that came out of the system fine. All they cared about was the revenue number. But other people had a real problem with it when they were trying to figure out item profitability and so what should we stock and, and, and that type of thing. So in that case, bad data was a little bit subjective. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, how did you find out that the cost was wrong in the first place? I think if I recall, it was years ago, but if I recall, it was just looking at the reports and saying that can't be right. Mm, yeah, right. Exactly. We've got an item we know we make, you know, whatever, 30% margin on, um, and it's showing that we're actually losing money on it. Interesting. Yeah. Yeah. So then I guess, how did you go about f fixing that? So in that case, it was a matter of, we tried to go back to the, um, the source system, the inventory system, and correct all of the um, average costing data and just get it reset and then try to use the system correctly from then on. Um, I'm not sure it ever got done yeah, correctly. Right. It was a massive, massive job. So, How did you identify the, all of the, the average costs that you had to fix? Great question. <laughs> well, <laughs> right, I, it right. wasn't my primary uh, job to fix that. But yeah, that, that would be a perfect example of where you would actually want to pull the data out of that system so you could do some analysis on it right. and try to pinpoint that and bump it up against other data, like data that you get from a vendor catalog or or something like that to try to figure out what's the magnitude of my problem and where do I need to look and mm -hmm. where do the, the problems seem to be coming in. Right, exactly. So that's a, that's a perfect example of I still want to get access to that data outside the system. And, right. and what I hear so often from clients is, okay, but I don't want access until I get that clean. Well, in fact, you need access to get it clean. Right. Well, yeah. And the first thing you said that what was you just happened to stumble upon, well, that looks wrong. Right. Right. Instead of, you know, if had you had like easy access to that data um, in a little bit more real time and you had some some sort of view into item margin, then you may have been able to find that a lot quicker. Exactly. Right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So it's super important. It's super important to still have access and insight into that data. And then, you know, once you get, even if you get it all cleaned up, 
you're still going to have the potential for it to go wrong again. Yeah. So you still need to keep an eye on those things. Yeah. Um, and having that system in place allows you to do that. And it also allows you, like you said, to figure out the extent of it. And that's just one example of many that could be considered bad data. Um, and I guess really what we're trying to get at is that first thing you have to do is identify it. Right. So another perfect example is um, companies that have, let's say, a customer list that's not well curated. And so they're getting a sales report and they see on their, I'm just making this up, but you see on their customer McDonald's that has a certain amount of sales that you sold to. And then you have another customer on there called McDonald's Inc. that you had a certain amount of sales and another one that's called McD's. Um, and they're actually all the same. Mm-hmm. So you might notice that on your sales report. You're looking and you're like, wait a second. This is showing up three times. I know it's the same thing. All right, so now you know you've got bad data. How are you going to fix that? Well, you could go into McDonald's and fix the entries for those three or try to combine them. But you probably have other problems, too. It's probably not just McDonald's. How are you going to get to the totality of your problem right. and then come up with a system for solving it? Mm-hmm. Right, yeah. I think you've probably got McDonald's, but it's also Burger King, and it's also Taco Bell. Right. It's, it's all the fast food that you can think of, <laughs> um, or all just to have different names. And it, you know, you can't zero in on the one specific problems. You need a you need to have a programmatic process to to snuff those things out and then fix them, and then make sure that they stay clean going forward. Yeah. Right. And I can't think of honestly a better way other than a than like a than a ready-made tool for doing that data quality analysis and stuff that um, other than pulling the data out, start getting insight into it a lot easier than just looking through your ERP. Um, And Power BI is an amazing tool for data exploration. I actually use it for that, and I have used it for that, uh, for that purpose for years. Like, I don't really know what's going on in this data. I'm just going to load it to Power BI so then I can just click around and quickly filter stuff and it just gives you all of that flexibility. Well, and the other reason you might want to actually pull bad data into your data lake so that you can do that kind of analysis or, or exploration with Power BI is once you've cleaned it up, you may have identified that you have potential process issues and you want to get compliance around training and use of your system so you don't keep creating these problems. Mm -hmm. And your source system may not have good reporting for allowing you to get that compliance. And so if you've got that data pulled into a data warehouse, a data lake, a lake house, um, that gives you the ability to have reporting that will actually alert, hey, we got another another bad thing here. Yeah, it's a great point, right? I mean, Power BI doesn't have to be just used for um, sales over time, right? right? It can be used for, you have a data problem here, you yes. know, and the X percent of records have this issue. And, you know, we've, you know, the high, just your progress for cleaning it up, right? Yeah. You know, Power BI is not just a, a board report tool. No. It's, a, it's an analytics tool. And a, part of analytics is, is looking at data. Yeah. And data quality is just another aspect of data. Well, and alerting on data. Mm-hmm. So it really can be a compliance tool. Right. Um, and I'm not talking about compliance like micromanaging people, although maybe there's an element of that, but compliance, making sure our processes are being followed. I yeah. mean, one of the things we'll see that uh, generates bad data is people using a transactional system like an ERP differently from how it was intended. Or or maybe it hasn't even been defined how it's intended. You know, An example would be, let's say you have a field that you're supposed to enter a duration uh, of time uh, or, or calendar days, but people don't actually know what the duration is. So some people are entering number of days, some are entering number of business days, some are entering weeks, some are entering months, and now you have really messy data. And you might feel like, okay, we need to go fix all that before it's even worth pulling the data out to do reporting on. And I would argue that it's actually quite the opposite. Get the data out so that you can go root out those problems, yeah, get them corrected, and then have compliance around how it's being entered after that. Right, exactly. I mean, you could, in that scenario, right, a good, good, real detailed example might be you know someone's putting in weeks and it's a and it turns out it's a three-day thing so they're like 0.2 right you know it's like okay well it's not 0.2 of a day if it was supposed right. to be day so, so you, you can, can find identify it. that stuff yeah but then also like you can surface those problems you know once you once you kind of like figure out what the rules are you can surface those problems for the people that are doing the data entry 
Yeah. And they can say, oh, whoops, mess that up. Yeah. You know, I'll go fix that, you know, that type of thing. So it, it, it can be very, very helpful for cleaning up your data. And that's it's been a hot topic lately. Yeah. It, it's uh, I'm glad we had this discussion because it, it sort of helped um, organize it in my mind a bit because I do hear that when I'm talking to clients about a data source. Maybe we've loaded a bunch of data sources, but they have one. Maybe it's with a company they acquired or something. They feel like, oh, that data's dirty. We're not going to load it. We'll wait till we clean it up. Um, and and it's always always hits me the same way. That that's backwards. Actually, you want to get the data so you can clean it. Um, but now we've got this podcast. I can point them to and hopefully help them get over that hump. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Right. So don't don't feel like it's garbage in, garbage out. I mean, it might be to start with, but do the garbage in <laughs> so that you can figure out how to clean it up on the way out. Yeah, exactly. Right. And that's that's where that's where things like putting your data into a data lake, putting it into Power BI, it's not just for reporting on amazingly clean data. Yeah. It helps you in so many different ways. Yeah, yeah, good. All right. Anything else to add? That's it. All right. Thanks, Caleb. Thanks.